I, I anticipate more parents to hopefully after this meeting will uh, call and, and inquire about more information. Uh, progress reports were mailed home Friday. Hopefully parents received them over the weekend or at, last, at, at least uh, uh, today. Um, again, those were mailed out to every parent or to, for all students on Friday. And uh, in one other note, uh, our department heads are preparing a response to the uh, main state uh, learning results information that has been forwarded. This is the, the, uh, the second phase of, of uh, recommendations uh, to the governor's office. And we're preparing a written response. We're finding some of the uh, criteria and in, in, uh, interest areas to be uh, quite uh, disconcerting in some respects. So we'll respond to that. And what I'd like to do is send copies of that letter to each board member and to the superintendent so you can see our response. We're hoping to get more input into that. Five staff members, including myself, attended a workshop at USM with the Southern Maine Partnership with uh, Lynn Miller. And there's quite a bit of uh, discussion about the, these learning results as they're being prepared. And uh, we're hoping for more input into the actual, the final results of that, that, that piece of legislation that will pass. The, the idea is by the end of, two, by the year 2002, that the uh, learning results will replace the current MEAs. So there, there's, a, there are, there's a lot of questions, there are a lot of questions out there about this, this whole procedure and process. So I'll keep the board informed as we respond to those and get responses back from the state. Any questions? Thanks, Rick. Thank you. Tom. Good evening. Uh, Keith mentioned um, that the Pond Cove grade level curriculum presentations have been going on. As we speak, the fourth grade is concluding theirs. And the informal feedback I've gotten from parents has been quite good. We sent a quick and dirty form home last week to get a more formal response and probably gotten 20 and uh, people agree it's a good thing to do. And they made some positive comments and suggestions for improvement. Uh, teach, I think the <clears throat> teachers deserve a lot of credit for the time and effort they put into it. And I think it uh, reflects well on the effort they've been doing to make uh, curriculum more coherent within the grade levels and from grade to grade. Now that school's been open for about a month, it's become our uh, practice to look at how the uh, once controversial placement policy has been. And um, now that I've been through it personally for a year, I've been through the statistics, and uh, I think it's working quite well. We. Um, from my observations of classrooms, uh, the placement policy has met its goal of having heterogeneous uh, communities of learners in each class. We do have um, some flexibility in being able to adjust to uh, parental, confidential parental information. And uh, through the process, I got nine formal requests for a transfer from one room to another. And since those requests did bring new information to light, I think we honored three. The comments I've gotten from parents, uh, the critical comments are they find the system a little too rigid. Um, I have suggested, uh, I think part of the reason is a slight misunderstanding about how to use the parental input form in the spring. That that, as you know, is meant for next year's teacher after the class has been formed. I think once we make that clear to everyone, including teachers, it looks like a good policy to me. And I'd be happy to answer your questions about that in a moment. Um, other things going on at Pond Cove besides what's on your, uh, I know, late report from me. We had about 40 people turn out for an organizational meeting on Odyssey of the Mind that uh, Martha Palmer is organizing. And we will have as many teams as we can scare up coaches for. It looks like we have a, a, a good uh, recruiting class of both kids and parents to do that. I think in the past Pond Cove has done it, and it's one of those things that has come and gone, but this group looks very enthusiastic, so we'll keep you informed about that. And um, finally, tomorrow night, the uh, Pond Cove's Parents Association is uh, sponsoring a, a forum on assessment. The Pond Cove staff has chosen assessment as a theme this year to organize a professional work, and tomorrow night, if anyone's interested, it'll be a, a session for parents to have some base level information about what assessment is, how it's used as Pond Cove, at Pond Cove and throughout the system, and to talk about things like the MEAs and um, learning results. Uh, Tom, isn't that Thursday night? Correct. <laughs> it's it's too bad it's Wednesday, a conflict right, Thursday, with the sixth Thursday. grade open house, which, right. you know, is. I think what happened was it got moved once. It was supposed to be last week, and it got moved. It is Thursday night. Yeah. 
Any questions? Any questions? Got to be a question. <laughs> no, it's, it's just a, about the issue of placement, and I yeah. do know there is a lot of confusion about that form that is sent yeah. home in the spring, and I do think we need to make it more explicit, but I, I don't see why we can't use that information that parents give in terms of just the classroom teacher reading that over and then passing it on in the kids' folder um, for the next year. I think that's what happens. I mean, but, but, but I ask for them uh, because some of them uh, have to be screened before okay. they uh, get to teachers. And uh, I was trying to make a very clear-cut distinction, too, between what is going on this year in terms of placement and what we expect next year. Right. So I, I was pretty rigid myself to make, make that. Okay. Well, idea. then I, I do think that it is important since we, we did try to just totally separate out the issue of, you know, placing your kid in a particular class next right. year. Um, from giving, you know, the kind of feedback that might be useful for placing a kid, that we should give parents that opportunity to, to give feedback specifically towards that purpose. Right. What I, what I tried to do was um, I read all of it and then generalized what it was for teachers. Mm -hmm. And there was a, an amazing agreement on what parents wanted for children. Okay. And the ones that were particular either got responded to individually or went to a separate file. Okay. So. Yeah, maybe if just a memo went home before that process happened so parents yeah. understood how that was used. The, the timing is, uh, well, <coughs> unfortunate in some cases because it appears, I think, to people that this will have a big influence on where your child goes and it, right. and it does not. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, okay. Tom. Yeah. Other questions? None? Thanks. The next item is school board subcommittees and reports, and the first one is finance subcommittee. Charlie? We met at 6.30 in the council chamber conference room. We signed warrants. We reviewed appropriations. Uh, overages and adjustments to certain lines were explained. Uh, we reviewed a request to look at absentee rates for schools. Um, we did a discussion. There was a discussion of rising special education costs given by Dr. Mowles. Um, we uh, were presented with the finalized audit report, um, which looked very favorable, and we revisited the class size at the high school and what the cost factor would be. Thank you, Charlie. Um, any questions? Next item is the technology committee. I don't know who's reporting tonight. <laughs> Charlie? Has the, the committee meets next week. Is yeah, but we did have a meeting. Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> uh, there was a meeting on the 17th of September. Um, essentially, um, this, a Bill York's rather detailed explanation of our um, 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 wiring and um, proposal was presented um, and also Jay went over some of his goals with the committee and the next meeting is on October 15th and they will be reviewing the status of the AUP after getting an administrative and staff feedback and they're going to target work objectives in our two primary goal areas of curriculum integration and personnel needs. That seems to be the focus for this year for now that the wiring is, is undergoing is, and, and hopefully getting network. The major target of work for this curriculum is looking, I mean, for this committee is looking at the curriculum integration. Right. Thank you, Charlie. Any questions? Next item is the Athletic Study Committee. I can report that the full committee has not met since our last meeting. That meeting is still scheduled. I think it's October 24th. It's a Thursday night. <laughs> Um, the three subcommittees, the um, philosophy, management procedures, and boosters continue to meet and work. And um, I've been involved in the management procedures uh, portion, and I can say we are really getting lots of work done. And I know the philosophy group is, since I've seen a lot of their work. Um, so we're going to have some really interesting stuff to report out um, when we do our workshop in November and as we meet again as a full committee in October. Are there any questions? 
The next item is the policy subcommittee. Gail. Yes. <clears throat> we had a meeting on September 16th. Uh, Sharon Merrill from the high school guidance and uh, Rick DeFusco attended that meeting. Um, at that time, we uh, discussed the file IKF graduation requirements and IKFA early graduation requirements and specifically to the change in language that uh, needed to be take to uh, be incorporated after we voted um, on the increased graduation requirements. It was decided then that we would separate out those two policies. Originally they were one in our policy book. So now we will be presenting tonight for our second reading a graduation and early graduation. <laughs> We went on further. Sharon Merrill discussed the need for um, some policy on our foreign exchange program. We currently have guidelines for students studying within our high school um, and do not have formal policy. And she was asking us to consider that and has given us some information. Uh, just for your information, we have two exchange students now, a young man from Bosnia and a young lady from England who is actually exchange students with the PATHs. Um, we have three students of our students who are studying abroad. One student is taking uh, this semester in Australia, and one student is in Paraguay, and one student is in New Zealand. We have one student studying this semester at Chiwanki. We will be continuing on with this discussion for the foreign exchange policy um, at the next meeting. Our next meeting is Thursday, this Thursday, October 10th at 7.45 a.m., and we will be discussing advertising in the schools. We will be discussing school board member ethics and the file IGDJR1, high school athletic rules and regulations, and the middle school athletic rules and co-curricular rules and regulations. And it's open to the public. Gail, I just might say that the athletic uh, procedures group today went over the um, athletic uh, what are they, the rules and regulations? Yes, and we just redid them all to make them one document that we plan to bring to the policy subcommittee, but I don't think they'll be typed up by Thursday morning. Um, Sue has all the notes, um, but it took, it was a lot of time that we put into it as a group, so maybe we could defer it, defer it for one more month. Then I'll have to get to um, Keith and Janet. If we're not going to be doing that. Well, advertising in the schools, we would need their input. Thank, Thank you. you. We did do a lot of work on that, though. But, um, <laughs> Excellent. It's not typed up. <laughs> um, the next is the pool study committee, Gail. Yes, that's me also. Uh, we, last month, uh, the committee, Mike McGovern and Scott Poulin, Sue Weatherby, and the committee members met with three groups who had responded to our um, ad for RFPs and we heard their presentations and we have just signed a contract with Harriman Associates in Auburn, Maine for them to um, give us a full assessment of our pool facility, the high school hallway leading into it, the entranceway, the locker rooms, the need for spectator space, the filter system, the quality of the air, you know, the whole thing and they're going to um, begin work at some point and hopefully be able to present to the town council and the school board and um, I imagine members of the public sometime in December um, or early January. Mike McGovern is at a conference and I don't know if there's been a date for that yet. But anyone with questions are urged to call Michael at town hall. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Gail. Um, Superintendent Search Committee, Anne. Uh, well, since our last meeting, I did not receive any feedback about the schedule that we were proposing, which I guess means everybody thinks it's okay, including the administrators, I hope. And I just, the, I added one advertising space. I can't remember where it was. It was right after our last meeting. There was more than your listed ones. There oh, right, right, one. okay, right, I've got that okay. in my notes. So that is, so what, what I think we'll do with this, if everybody agrees, is um, maybe we could publish this through the Cape Courier and the, um, the Parent Association newsletters, maybe in November, um, after we have this short discussion about how we're going to um, solicit community and teacher um, Representation. Uh, representation on the um, semi-finalist interview committee. And what I would propose 
um, is that we do what we discussed earlier, and that is have people self-nominate, maybe you know, write a short paragraph about why they want to do it. And, but the main, you know, the main criteria is going to be that they can basically block out three weeks of their life ahead of time to guarantee that they'll be at these interviews, because it's very important we have everybody there. Um, and if people agree that's a good way to do it, then I think Cynthia could be the one to go through and just choose, choose the people. Um, and if, if that's agreeable, then we could basically advertise that opportunity at the same time that we give the timetable and give people a certain amount of time to respond, unless somebody has some better way of choosing. Sounds fine. Sounds good. Sounds fine. Okay. Okay. All right. I will Great. take care of doing that. <coughs> Any questions for Ann? No. Um, research Strand Committee. Gail? Oh. Is that you? Is that me? <laughs> we did have a meeting. <laughs> Put you on the spot. The first week in September, uh, Shar Shari was the coordinator of that meeting, and I guess I am really at a loss on what was accomplished. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Next just, just to bear you out. Oh, thank you, Cynthia. <laughs> well, a lot of it was a review of the summer work that the teachers had done based on the work with Jim Curry and some of those issues. But nothing was Nothing new. No, right. nothing new. Is there any anticipated time that we would have a report from the research committee? Well, their coursework is over this fall, and they are working at presenting or, or developing a best practices um, guide or something. No, it, it's it's a video, computer based, isn't it? Computer based catalog of best practices within our system right now, which has required some extra pieces of equipment. I think that's been already purchased last spring. And then Jim Curry um, is helping us do that. But that will not be ready, completely ready, by the end of his commitment with the coursework. But it all should be ready by the end of our school year, if, if I understand that correctly. And then, then that gets built on continually, but the base Will be there. Would we expect then the next school year some implementation of um, expected practices at each grade level? Well, it's my understanding that that dialogue is being shared with, with um, faculty right now and that people are exchanging ideas and, and um, starting to take on best practices. So, yeah. Okay. As we look for consistency, it would be nice to have certain things that we require at each grade level <coughs> to do with that too. Our newly implemented committee data sheet on that particular committee has what is to be accomplished and by when. Thank you. I haven't read them yet since so they we were just, just placed here at 7.30. But document best practices going on in system now, May of 1997. Establish a K-12 research strand using common language and common strategies, May 1997. So it seems May of 97 yeah. supposed to be. So for implementation really the next year. Great. Thank you. Um, the next committee is the Reading Policy Committee. Now, I don't know. Gail again. Have you been going, Gail? I've been going. I, well, I went to the last meeting. <laughs> I'm on the spot here. <laughs> we met on September 20th, and it was a uh, roundtable discussion on where we are and where we're going. And uh, Tom Eismeyer and I were charged with working on a draft of, a first draft of what um, we hope will be a reading policy K-12. Um, and I've given that to him, and, and we're now going to distribute it to the policy um, committee on Thursday. And it was decided that once that policy is in place, this committee would um, begin to create a standards and performance indicator um, scale or criteria guidelines for K-12 but they're waiting for direction from the board um, after they s the board sees the policy. Great, thank you. Any questions, Anne? Are they talking about these standards applying beyond the language arts teachers in the system? Or right now, are they really looking at just standards for within the language arts I classes? I think right now, correct me, but I think it's standards for reading. Across the across the curriculum. Every subject area. Well, we had a discussion on every teacher every being a teacher of reading. Okay. 
That's what I want. Pardon me? Every teacher. Every discipline, every teacher has responsibility to help our children be right. But these readers. standards that are going to back up this policy are going to, going to address that. Well, yes. Yes. Nancy? Yes. <laughs> Tom's answer was good. It was yes. It was, it was, <laughs> this is really brief, just an expansion of yes, but only a small expansion. Um, and the answer is yes, because you will still see a lot of the standards work will be done in what is typically looked at as English and language arts teachers as you move to the middle school and the high school. But also, that's just for the literature part. You will also see sections where public document, informational document, and functional documents are addressed, and those are things that are very much across the curriculum. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Any other questions on the reading um, committee? Then the next one is the arts committee. And is that Keith? Yes, we've had a flurry of meetings, and uh, <laughs> in the past couple of three weeks, and, and in front of you tonight. Uh, right now, right before the meeting, is our committee, and I'd like to turn it over to Susie, and uh, she's going to uh, tell us about the the plan. Sure, you don't want to turn it over to Gail. <laughs> <laughs> um, this uh, document draft represents. Uh, the work that ha has been accomplished since the last time I was here, which was in June, reporting to you with our mission and vision statement, core beliefs. Uh, you've, have you had this just since 7.30, or did you have this? I saw it at 7.30 for the first time. Oh, all right. Oh, okay. All right. So, um, hot off the press. So I don't expect you to, um, to, to have um, uh, digested the contents, and I'm not going to I'm not going to go through them one by one, but I, I think you can see that it's, um, it's a fairly clear outline of recommendations, and even though it's referred to as a five-year plan, it's in fact a three-year plan, um, mainly because what is accomplished in the next two and three years will determine what happens after that. I mean, that, I think that was the rationale. Uh, so it, in the first year, the first year, which we're in right now, uh, the expectation is that we will be inventorying existing, um, the existing situation and, um, and making recommendations coming out of, uh, of those inventories, um, defining needs uh, and establishing committees to focus on curriculum development and, um, and then some staff development and, um, and budget concerns. But nothing, the only budget issue, the only budget requests for this year. Oops, where is it? Uh, it's for staff development. For uh, it, the January uh, staff development day, one half day devoted to arts, arts committee work, um, and then everything else that we're requesting in terms of staff development and, uh, uh, and K programming will in fact take place in year two. So. Susie, is that yeah. request for that January? It's one of the existing staff. It's one of the existing. And things, you're asking yeah. that for half a day, your arts curriculum committee, K-12, can meet by themselves. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Sorry. Are there any other, any questions? Any other questions? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I do have a question. <laughs> no, I just um, the mission statement. Is that intact from the last time that you, oh there has been a there has been a revision actually in the second line um, K through 12 has been added okay so it's still a draft I mean uh, as far as I know right but I was just wondering if you'd done any no that was the only change okay. thank you any other questions thanks no thanks Susie um, I guess I would ask the board how do we want to react to this document? Do we want to have a chance to read it and go over it? And then um, would we want to, when would we like to respond to that group? Or should we do it through Keith? Yeah. Um, Priscilla? Well, I, you know, I think we need time to look yeah. through this, but I think going through Keith sounds like a good idea. 
Ann? <laughs> well, actually, though, when we did the technology plan, we had more chance to kind of sit down and, you know, kind of talk it through. And I guess we did it uh, mostly through the budget process. Um, this, this doesn't seem to have all that much of a budget impact, but I guess I would like the opportunity just to talk to the people who were involved in this, and maybe it's just a matter of whoever wants to goes to their next meeting. That might work. Would you have time? I'm not sure when your next meeting is scheduled to have a time for board members to react to this plan or any other ideas? Great. Well, why don't um, you let us know when the next meeting is, and board members can either attend or contact Keith, who would be attending with their feedback, and we can work from there, if that sounds, sounds okay. Great. Great. Thank you. Next item is unfinished business policies. We have two for a second reading. Gail. Okay. The first policy... Um, to be voted on tonight is GCER administrative guidelines for long-term and short-term substitute professional staff employment. And we added the evaluation of if a substitute is in one assignment for nine consecutive weeks, that substitute will be evaluated by an administrator as per the Cape Elizabeth Teacher Evaluation Plan. That is the only change um, in this policy. Thank you. Any other questions? Is there a motion? I oh, want we'll to do it together. Okay. okay How about I'll the do next it together. One? My second one is IGCDA post secondary enrollment options. Uh, we had um, asked that under to be eligible for this, the uh, new language have completed all available high school coursework in the field in which post secondary courses are requested and that they maintain a C average in that in courses overall. And then under B, under the graduation credits given, graduation credits awarded may not exceed five high school credits for each credit college course. Colleges give different amounts than the high school. And also the maximum of two courses annually per student, and no transportation will be provided. Those are the changes. Any questions for Gail? Is there a motion? Ann? I move that we adopt file IGCDA post-secondary enrollment options and GCER long-term and short-term substitute professional staff employment. Is there a second? Second. George, any other discussion? All those in favor? Seven zero. Thank you, Gail. The next item is the mission statement review and adoption. We have not formally adopted this new mission statement. We put it out to the public in June, and then again just recently in the most, uh, sorry, in the most recent Cape Courier to try to get some feedback. I know that Pond Cove has circulated it, and um, middle school, it's in their new student um, assignment book, handbook. Um, high school has also I think gotten it out there. Um, we have heard virtually no feedback on it, which I guess <laughs> probably means it's okay. <laughs> um, are there any other comments by board members? No. Sort of the end of the long focus group process. Um, is there a motion then? Charlie. I move ex acceptance of the revision of the mission and vision statement for the Cape Elizabeth School System. Uh, I would like to read the mission. Cape Elizabeth students will become informed, responsible citizens through a rigorous education supported by a school and community partnership. Thank you. Is there a second? Ann and Gail both. <laughs> um, any other discussion? I would Go. just like to thank um, <coughs> Connie and Beth and Ann for pulling this all together. Uh, it was one of my goals for the last couple of years 
to revisit the mission statement, and I'm glad it has turned out the way it has. Well, lots of people put lots of time into it, and I'm glad it, we ended up with a product. Um, Anne? I just want to say that having been through the first process, I really do think this is an improved document, and it shows um, to some extent how far we've come in this system. So. Great. And we need to put it out there. Go ahead, George. Just, just a comment about um, mission and vision statements in general. Um, it, it's nice to have it done as a product, but if we're truly growing, it will always be evolving and changing, and it's something that should be uh, revisited at least once a year. Um, so I just make the, the recommendation that somehow we incorporate this maybe into our planning session that happens in June mm -hmm. to come back and just revisit this. Yeah, and we really need to get it out there too, and in, really on every wall in every classroom that this is what we're trying to aim towards. We, we also need to actually use it. Yeah. <laughs> and I can say that in the philosophy subcommittee of the Athletic Study Committee, we did use this um, as the basis of our discussion about our philosophy and how athletics fit into, into the mission. So it is a useful tool. Great. Any other comments? And all those in favor, 7-0. Uh, the next item is the format for the community survey. Um, that was something that we talked about during our summer work that Nancy and I came up with a piece in a draft form. Nancy has not had a chance to share this with faculty and so we have to be sure we are clear that it's a draft form. And um, we have now an example of what Nancy and I put out there as a draft, and then another example of Cumberland North Yarmouth's um, a survey they did, which was at a little different um, emphasis, but it had some, some good ideas also. Nancy has talked to me on the phone with some of her feedback from um, grade level teams, and um, it was a time for the board to give us feedback and then see where we go from here. And just so the public knows, when we changed the placement policy in Pond Cove a number of years ago, we said to parents we would make an effort to get feedback on their child's program from the year that they have finished. So we would use that information to make the programs better, more consistent, and, and listen to what they were saying about what their child's experience had been. And we are now believing as a system we need to do that K-12. Um, and the reason that there are two ones for the Cape Elizabeth, and they're really identical, is one addresses the high school needs more of the, a particular subject area. Um, and the other ones, oh, actually that would be 7 through 12. Um, and the other one addresses a grade level. I have, I have the revised edition from Cumberland. They've now gone to a new format. So one that you have, they have this. Oh, they have this. They have this. Okay. And I talked with Bob Hassan, who's the superintendent today, and I think the one discouraging thing, and perhaps it's a word of caution to you, their return rate on this questionnaire was 3%. Uh, they were hoping to get 10 to 12%. They only had a 3% return. And I think if you look at it quickly, you know right away that one of the issues is that it's probably too long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so certainly when you go to look at your revisions, I think there are some excellent uh, items and some uh, stimulants in terms of questions in here, but I think you do need to make it much shorter. Yeah. It looks like, just at quick glance, they really are encompassing lots of things from sports to early release Wednesdays and things. And we were really trying to just narrow it down to get feedback on the child's academic program for the year that just passed. And um, so the next step would be to take revisions and come up with an, a revised document that has feedback from staff, administrators, and school board, and even parents. Is there a deadline or target date for that? I would like to have this done so that it goes out. We sort of talked about you know, April, May is when it should go out to parents, so we need to have it done by then. Anne? I think this is actually excellent, and I don't see why you can't just use the one form because one thing I was unclear about, are parents going to have the chance to give feedback on every subject area? I know at Hong Kong they only have you know, one teacher, but they also have music art and everything. So it's the thought to let them respond about 
every teacher? You know, we, we certainly there. thought that was important for 7th through 12th. I think it's important. And we just didn't really discuss it for Pond Cove. Um, we, I, I think parents should be able to give feedback on yeah, all the teachers. That's probably true. So it, to me, one form would do, and you, you send as many as there are teachers the kid is exposed to. I think it's nice to have it one page in length. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. And some of Nancy's feedback had been just instead of doing the one through five there to use, um, I think it was Cumberland's little boxes with very satisfied, you know, just changing those little boxes. There weren't major changes and put them all in the positive, but um, it, it wasn't a, a large amount. Um, we can form a group to look at this more closely or Nancy and I can take another stab at it um, with other input. Um, I, I, I don't know, maybe I'm oversimplifying, but I don't see why, I mean, this is the first year we're going to try to do it. If we get, you know, some feedback from some staff members, faculty, and from us, and show it to maybe at parents' meetings, the, uh, you know, parent associations, just get that basic feedback. It's only a first try at it and see how it works this year and then revise it after that if we need to. We have so many other things we're doing. I don't think we need a whole other committee. To look, I mean, this looks pretty complete to me. It's what I would like to fill out as a parent. Other comments? I, I just, um, I, I think, uh, number one, the shortness is very, very good. I think there's a direct correlation with return rate in terms mm -hmm. of the more pages, the less return you get. Um, I also liked uh, having the, the Cumberland model, um, and, and just a recommendation would be on these open-ended questions, in the same way that Cumberland provided space, um, list up to five things or whatever, um, I, I think that you are more likely to solicit some responses if you just format it in the same way that they did. Just those lines. Just the lines. Yeah. It just makes a little bit of a yep. difference. And I'm assuming, although you've said teachers, that really you're looking for feedback that's more global than just, this is not just a teacher issue. In other words, you're looking for program feedback, et cetera. Okay. And I think this is geared towards that. I mean, it says teacher, but it's right. framed around the curriculum. Why don't Nancy and I have another stab at it and make the minor changes you've said, and you'll see something then next month with those minor changes and any other feedback. And if Tom or Rick have other feedback that they want to get to Nancy, or you know, we can go from there. But the goal is to have this go out in the spring to parents and then um, to react to this year's program. OK. Thank you. Um, next item is update on class size for grade 11. Um, I don't know who wants to um, give a summary of the situation. I was not at the finance committee meeting since it was fourth grade open house night, um, but I did attend the meeting with the high school English teachers on Monday afternoon, and they expressed, again, their major concern about very large class sizes at the junior level. Um, they have three sections now of 24, 25 students, and they were, are requesting in one class mm. if, if we hadn't had a second section. So, but it has had some impact on what is, has transpired. Yeah. Because yeah. it was a reallocation at, at their discretion of how they use that time. That's right. That's right. Well, I, I think I've sort of set the frame of, <laughs> of where we are. Um, and we did discuss this at our last meeting, and it was defeated. Um, four to three to not increase it and that we went back to, to go back to the teachers and say how can we solve this with other support um, that we really felt our contingency was dangerously low and we didn't have the funds to do this. Um, and I think that's what, uh, that's why we had the meeting Monday and that they really felt they couldn't solve it any other way. Um, and so that they would they really felt strongly about adding the other section. So if anyone would like to say where they stand on it or comment. Just a point of clarification, Beth. Um, the, the vote 
last month was specifically for increase in, in a math class. Is that correct? No. no. It was specifically this exact request. Okay. Um, I was one of the four, and I made the comment at the board meeting that if um, the situation did not show improvement or they didn't feel that the students were getting the instruction that they need, that we really needed to hear about it, and we did hear about it on Monday. Was it Monday? Mm -hmm. It was only Tuesday. And um, I feel that these students, at the very least, need the additional help through the um, quarters that would um, entail the research uh, project. Other comments? Anne? This is obviously a really complex issue, but I, I would not be able to support an increase because, you know, I, t I talked to Rick at length on the phone this morning about this issue of the fact that we had thought we had solved the, the problem with class sizes by giving the two tenths, which we also did in math. Um, and school board members sometimes get accused of micromanaging what goes on in the, in, in the schools, and none of us want to do that. And I feel that when we get in a situation like this where we, ha we do think we've budgeted for the class size issue and then things happen within the building in terms of, of uh, what sections are scheduled. Um, then we're asked mm -hmm. to come back and, and relook at it, but really in terms, in some senses, things haven't really changed and, and what seems to be driving this is really some underlying very complicated issues um, that I really think we need to get at in terms of um, you know, the behavior of the kids in the classrooms. I'm not sure what our standards are really high enough or whether there are enough consequences for bad behavior. Um, you know, looking at, uh, you know, time, the time management for the teachers and trying to take some things off, off their plates. Um, some of the issues with the, you know, preparation to be at that level. Um, they're very complicated issues, but I guess what I'm a little disappointed at is that we did ask and, you know, I voted against it at the last meeting, but I did specifically say that I thought, you know, we should, if we need to spend a little money to, to help out the situation, maybe somebody grading papers, I don't know, they should let us know that. And we, you know, specifically asked for a meeting to talk about those things. But what we got was um, just a plea for, we have to have this, this is the only thing that we'll do, it's adding more staff members. If we do it here, I, I don't know what our rationale is for not doing it for math, which, is, which has the same problem, or you know, why we don't do it at first, in first grade next time they ask. I just don't think this is a good um, decision-making process, and I really think we could probably reshuffle uh, resources within the building to give um, the teachers the support they need in correcting papers or one-on-one -on -work, one work with the students. Maybe some of the parents would like to come in and help, um, you know, with the kids too. I don't, I don't know, but I don't think in the, particularly in the state that the contingency is in right now that we can afford to, to take this approach. And I would ask that no matter what kind of vote we have on this, that we take the underlying problems very, very seriously. Every single year we hear about some crisis of um, kids not being prepared, or this is a special class, or this this and that, and you know, it's just continuous. We've got to get to these underlying issues. So I would, you know, demand that we have some kind of summit to talk about how we got to this point where we have so many kids who apparently <laughs> aren't in control, aren't prepared, and the teachers are totally stressed out. We shouldn't be getting to this point. This is not a good way to make decisions, and we've got to do something about it. Other comments, Charlie? I would, kind of, I would kind of support the second option of providing some help the second and third quarter, which are the research uh, project quarters. What, one of the other things that came out of our finance subcommittee meeting was under high school department 8900-3114 is a reading tutor line. And from my understanding from the business manager, that has not been used the last couple of years. 
uh, if we're budgeting stuff that's not being used, again, you know, this, there's, a, there's an area that we could use to meet this, this one-time need. Would you like to address that? That money that's budgeted is something that is more of a preparation in case the need is there of a student who enters the high school who needs services or currently uh, demonstrates the ability and not as a special ed or, or coded student to have that money also for illnesses and whatnot to have that reading ability uh, available. So that's why it's not absorbed there. It is money that I at this point would think would be appropriate to, to shift toward the, the, the assisting the English department at this point uh, to, to meet that demand. More, exp you know. So, but that that money is there. Um, but it has, but it hasn't been utilized the last couple of years. Right. And then this is this is an area that we could use for this one time. Right. I'm not saying to eliminate it from your budget, but this is the case I think that's going to benefit more students than I agree, one or two. I agree with you. Other comments. Well, I will make my comments. I have thought long and hard about this one. And I am so discouraged on two fronts. One, that we have a group of juniors who come into the system. This is 75 students who have, most of them have failed the grammar test. They have problems in reading and problems in writing that we are worried that doing a 15-page paper at the junior level is going to be a major obstacle. I think we as a system have failed them. It isn't the teachers that have them this year, it's the teachers that have had them all through, and it is the teachers that they've been in the high school for two years with. I also think we as a community and parents have failed. These are students who are behaving so badly in class that the teachers cannot teach. These are junior students, and we cannot, it is the parents' responsibility and us as a community that our kids come into school and be ready to respect their teacher and listen to what is being taught. It is a situation that I can't support any money for unless it is tied to addressing the needs of kids as they go through so that we talk to the middle school and we talk to Pond Cove and we don't pass along huge numbers of kids, 75, that are not capable of writing a 15-page paper when they are 17. And I also tie it to a meeting, we talked about this with the teachers, with parents of all of those kids involved, that their behavior is expected to be good in these classes and they are expected to, to behave. And it is unbelievable to me that we have to have class sizes of 15, 16, and 17 for juniors in high school when we have class sizes of 20 and 21 for kindergarten and first grade students who can behave. I think it's, it's a really sad situation, and I blame everybody involved. Um, and so I could only support either piece of money unless it's tied to a real look at the curriculum and a real look at the behavior of those students. I would hate to put a note on that, that all the juniors are misbehaved uh, students. Um, that is one percentage of the, of, of the problem. The other percentage is that we have a, in that CP section, we have wide varieties of abilities. And that's where the teachers are struggling with trying to meet the needs of many of those. I agree with you that there are, there are issues there with some of our populations of kids that are becoming a behavioral situation in those classes. But it, it's a combination of things. I think you alluded to earlier, Beth, that, that or, or Ann mentioned that, a complexity of, of issues that are being drawn into this. And I would hate to label the junior class as a bunch of behavioral problems. No, actually, I learned of and, things that happened in the middle school today. Two athletic trips where we had both male and female teams in the middle school that behaved so badly on their buses returning from athletic events that it's unacceptable. And I guess I just want us to, as a community to realize that this is going on okay. and it is unacceptable. And these English teachers taught about, talked about sending you know, lines of kids out of class down to be disciplined. And I really think for juniors it's absolutely unacceptable. So 
I won't support a motion unless it is really tied to a look at solving the problem in those two areas. Well, then I would say, how are we going to do that? I mean, well, we can't just say, because we've tried that before, said, well, now, okay, we'll do this, but well, I would tie we have to solve the problem, and we don't, ever, we don't ever solve the problem. Well, I would tie it to at least a meeting with all those parents of juniors. We did talk about that with these English teachers, and I think they agreed to do that. Is that that'll, solve, yeah. that'll solve a tiny piece, piece of this. What are we going to do about... We did also the tell the English teachers that they had to get working and talk to the middle school teachers, and everybody needs to stop being defensive and saying, you know, well, I didn't do, you know, this, but really start to address it. And maybe it's through the reading committee. Um, I don't... It, I think it me, has to come from the board. I really do. Well, it is coming from the board with our research committee and the reading No, committee. no, no. We need to... We need to not have it so diffused that someday it might solve, solve itself by magic. I mean, we need to take this, I think, as a case study and decide on a way of fixing it. So I, you know, I would suggest that we get um, some people from the board and from the schools and parents and students and take this as a case study and sit down and look at how we pick it apart and fix it. I mean, I really think we have to do something, and we have not been successful in the past, you know, saying, please go out and do that. Yeah. I mean, well, years right. and years go by, and we'll all be gone and we'll all be dead by the time this <laughs> And I'd like it to be fixed well, you know, while we can have a positive impact on it. That's my suggestion. Yeah. George. Just a comment. Um, maybe what we need to do is to, um, is to address this problem, but also, um, you know, I'm, I, I agree with Ann, maybe not, not quite so, so strongly in terms of this never being solved and we'll all be dead and such, but I, I really do. I've only been on the board a few months. <laughs> but I've only been on the board a few months, so um, I, I, um, I'm, I'm by nature an optimist. I think that we can address it. It is a very, very complex problem. And maybe what we need to do is to allocate um, some portion of this, what would have been $6,200, uh, and pay the $4,000 and do the interim solution, and maybe utilize the additional $2,000 to get, get an independent facilitator in here to really maybe orchestrate an effort such as Ann identifies. Um, at this point, I mean, it, it really is it's a systematic issue, it seems, um, and, and certainly not just the problem of this particular class. Um, the, this, this problem, by its very nature, um, is likely to repeat itself again next year and again the year after. Um, the important thing is to look at it as a problem, look at it creatively, which, which apparently, um, you know, we, we, uh, we haven't done. Um, and, uh, and, and see if we, we can't address the root cause of the problem. You know, and, and I think that that's essentially what, what I'm hearing others say. Um, I would support, um, again, as, as Charlie said, uh, the uh, sort of the less expensive uh, intervention, which, which we're being told apparently that this will fix the problem or help to fix the problem. We certainly don't want these students to be the losers in this case. Um, but I would, I would suggest that we also consider an allocation of the rest of that money to do something, to, to throw it at the, the, bigger, the bigger issue, the bigger problem. And, or, I, I, I just think you shouldn't lose that $5,000, which if you're going to throw any money at it, that's the money that should be thrown, not new monies out of the contingency. And as far as getting a facilitator to do that kind of meeting, it's probably a good idea because I think it's pretty obvious there's a high level of frustration am among some of us. I think it is a good idea, but I'm sure there's, there's monies within the staff development um, purview you, to, to take care of that. Are you saying the 5000 from the reading tutor line? Right. Right. Use existing money mm -hmm. in the budget. Okay. All right. Oh, Gail. Well, I don't want the uh, junior class to be labeled as the fixed bad boys. Um, 
I think if class of 25, a class that's set up to be a discussion type of class where you talk about different types of literature and you review your writing, uh, is very difficult in a class of 25 with ideally behaved students because in, in one class period, all those students won't have an opportunity to really give their point of view. Having been a teacher, you have one child that is a, just a needle that sees your vulnerable button and just goes for it every single class time is extremely difficult and you have 25 other students. Um, I, I don't think it's fair to say you have 75 students that um, are really a difficult class. I will agree, the one English class level class that took the freshman grammar test last week, there was not one student who passed it. There is a real need here in this class for some catch up work. If we put the major research paper in the junior year, which is where it has been for the past decade, um, and is changing with the research strand, a lot of hand-holding has to happen. These kids are using the library in a new way. They're organizing note cards and doing footnotes, and the teacher is going to be asked a million questions along the way, and it takes a lot of time. And we have also the first year where we have the students who were <clears throat> in Joe Conroy's class for freshman and sophomore, a level, I don't know what to call this class that they were in. It's not remedial, but it was below the college prep. And they are now in this college prep class, doing well in this college prep class. Um, but we have a large group with many abilities and needs. I think it's unfair to ask the teachers to try to manage day after day, 25, and I don't think, I think the issues are there, and I think we have to look at them. I personally don't think we need a facilitator. I think everyone that's in this room here is hearing how strongly we feel, and we all can work together on establishing higher standards and bringing in the community and saying, you know, look, look what's happening here. We have a real problem. Um, I would put the whole 6,000 into this, and I think we need to look at what should be the class size for English in the high school, freshman year through senior year. I think 25 is too high. And I don't think we've asked the community what they think yet. Only one class, I think, is 25. The rest are 23. Um, and we certainly have classes at Pond Cove that have discussions on reading texts that are 22 at least. Is that correct, Tom? Yeah, 22, 23. So I think we have a lot of issues here. And I really think if we do want to get to the root of it, it's a major study piece. Um, so anyway, does anyone like to make a motion? Well, I'll move. Are you? OK. Or Charlie, sorry. I think it has to be one of the people who voted it down yeah, it in order to bring it back on the agenda. <laughs> OK. So would somebody who voted it down make a motion? Um, I move that we um, hire, we use the $4,134.70 to provide support to the junior CP English classes during the research semester taking products second and third quarter. Thank you. Um, and that we utilize the money, the unexpended money from the reading tutor line, Re reading tutor account. Is there a second? I second that. Um, discussion. I would say I would support that motion as long as it was tied to forming a study group to do that, if anyone would like to amend it for that purpose. Um, or would you like to change your motion? Or but no, I'll just, anyone? Can I just amend? Yes. <laughs> um, um, I further request that there is a meeting set up involving the school board, the uh, high school administration, the high school English class, and the parents of the high school junior classes to discuss issues, the pertaining issues. Anne? I just want to make it clear um, that that's not the kind of um, issue I was talking about. Yeah. I, I know you guys are talking about no. something with, with the parents. Well, um, 
I, I think I was sort of saying both. I, to solve this little problem, I think this the parents is tied need in to strictly for this. That I think what but you then were talking a different about problem something here. Yeah. far more far-reaching and yeah, completely necessary. But you're not going to say that in your motion. Um, <laughs> you don't have to. We don't like but. Well, <laughs> you get this all down so far. Um, I further move that um, a task force or a, task a, or a force committee be is established please. to look at the far-reaching issues around class size. Not class size. Uh, well, yes, I, I would just no, say using this, a... using this as a case, as a case study. I mean, I don't think you have to delineate exactly what it is. I think we using need to look at it. Using this as a case study to improve the Cape Elizabeth schools. But it needs to be K twelve. This is obviously yes. right. yes. move yes. along from the high yes. school issue. Right? Yes. Okay. Is there a second? I would like the motion read. Right. Thanks for coming. You must be kidding. <laughs> That's I second it. I'm not going to re-second it unless it's red. All right. The motion, as I have it written, is move to use the four thousand one hundred thirty-four dollars uh, to provide support for the junior research class during the second and third quarter, and use the unexpected fund, the unexpended funds from the reading tutor line. And then it was amended to add that this would happen in conjunction with a meeting set up with the school board, high school administration, and faculty and parents to discuss the issues, and also a task force to establish, be established to look at the far-reaching issues using this as a case study to improve K-12. You didn't think I could write that. <laughs> <laughs> I second that. Is there any discussion? Keith. <laughs> he speaks. Um, I'm not going to support the motion. Um, I agree that, agree with most everything that's said here tonight, uh, that there's a problem with this particular group. Uh, that something needs to be done. We need to study it to find out what the, the big problem is. Uh, my question is, is what are we going to do next month when we get the next request for additional staff to, for whatever reason, and uh, we really don't have the money. We're robbing Peter a little bit here. Uh, so I, I'm not going to support the motion. Other comments, questions? No? Yeah. Well, I, I'm reluctant to support the motion because I would like to be seeing a new position for the rest of the year. I think it's going to be very disruptive on those kids to be taken out, put in a smaller section for two quarters, and then put back in the larger quarter at the end of the year for only $1,300 difference, so it's a small amount of money. But if my vote is a swing vote, and it would be all or nothing, I would support it. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm going to support it, even though it's a little inconsistent with what I said before, but only because we're taking money from a line that has to do with language arts anyway. We're not putting new money towards it. That's the only, that's the only way I could possibly um, support it. And that's how I think it's different from taking it out of contingency. George, did you want uh, Just a point of clarification. I think there is um, approximately $5,900 on that, on that line. Is that correct? $5,000 on the reading tutor line. It's $5,000 was appropriated. Wasn't uh, 700 of that expended already? That was last year. Yeah. That was last year. <coughs> so, so the current balance is $5,000. Yeah. That was the budgeted amount. It has not been touched. Has not been touched. Any other questions? Oh, go ahead. I, I guess you know. I, I guess I'm having the, the, the feeling also that um, if if we needed facilitation assistance, that the superintendent could find that in another line item, or we could find someone. Well, tonight that will go to everyone. Okay. So we would cross off off the top 
um, will be supervised and just have them scheduled. Scheduled. Through. Yes. Um, does that make, does that clear That's it up? Fine. And then I will probably add the statement back to say that outside activities will be supervised by the, yes. the program. So I'll read. Yes. Those two statements will, will change. Great. Okay, one will be added and the one that's eliminated will not include the supervision of it. Okay. Okay. Is everybody? Is that clear? Is there a motion then? On that, no. Charlie? Oh no, sorry. Well, I don't really need a motion on that. A motion will really come when I do the nomination. Oh, okay. 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 Then new business policies first reading. <clears throat> As I had um, said, we have two new policies for first reading: the, early, the graduation requirements and the early graduation. One, we are separating them um, into IKF and IKFA. And we have just created a graduation requirement that reflects what the board has already approved, 230 credits to graduate, six courses per semester, um, one semester of social studies for the freshman year, one semester of social studies government course for the senior year. And the other major changes, a semester course represents one half Carnegie unit or five credits. Students who fail a required course must develop with parent or guardian and guidance counselor a plan for making up the lost credit. And we are proposing that we eliminate um, the parts that no longer are um, appropriate for our curriculum. And then early graduation is separate from this policy and is at any discussion? I had some comments, but um, anybody else? Go ahead. I had on the early graduation, when you look under um, G and H, I wasn't sure that they necessarily applied to early graduation. It's really what we do for mm -hmm. any class. So I felt like they should be um, not under the early graduation policy because we'll never find them again and know where to call them up. So put those so, under graduation? Well, I'm not sure. Probably under graduation, but we can work that out at the policy meeting. But I just, I thought those should probably um, be pulled. And then I wasn't sure the credit waiver piece, again, should go under an early graduation policy or if that's under just graduation requirements. So maybe we can, at the policy meeting, look at just a little fine-tuning that, if anybody um, has any major concerns or questions. Um, those were mine. I, I think it might be important to note that one of the changes in here, and correct me if I'm remembering this wrongly, but that we, we kind of ch changed the focus to um, considering these students as seniors and made a distinction that they are invited to participate in senior activities related to graduation. I, I, ha I, I have that actually in the minutes from the policy yeah. meeting and that was D, upon right. approval as early graduates they will be invited to participate in all senior activities relating to graduation right. but <laughs> essentially they would remain with their class until right. that but time. That's a, and that is that's a, a change, change that should have been highlighted. Just, so yeah, you yeah, might want to know that. that. So we'll go back to the policy. Thank you. Any other comments on this? Charlie, did you have anything? No? Okay. Thanks. Um, next one was consideration of the superintendent's nomination for athletic fee positions. Go ahead, Cynthia. Right. The first one I have is for High school assistant field hockey coach, Karen Willows. Uh, she is new to the system, but she's had extensive experience. She's a 1990 graduate of UNH and has had a variety of coaching and uh, athletic playing experiences. And do we want to do that one separately? It's your choice. I'll move do on. them all. Go ahead. All right, for winter, um, we have, oops, sorry. sorry. Jim Ray for varsity boys basketball, Kurt McCandless for JV boys basketball, Tom Robinson for freshman boys basketball, 
Dan Deniso, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, for Vasily Girls Basketball, Scott Shea, JV Girls Basketball, Kerry Kurtz, Vasily Boys Swimming, and also Vasily Girls Swimming, Ben Raymond, Assistant Swimming, Tim Bagan, Assistant Swimming and also Diving, Charlie Carroll for Varsity Ice Hockey and Assistant Ice Hockey, Larry Greer for Boys Indoor Track, Larry Greer for Girls Indoor Track, and we have a vacancy for Assistant Indoor Track. All of those names um, are people who have been with us prior, in those positions in a prior. So these are not vacancies for diving and assistant ice hockey? Well, as I look back, I think you may be correct. Certainly assistant indoor track is a vacancy. Diving, I'm looking for a little direction from the audience. Athletic. No. Athletic is a vacancy. It's a vacancy, sorry. And assistant ice hockey is probably a Okay. And assistant indoor track. Is a vacancy, a vacancy. Yes, clearly. Right. And as I Any, say, all of those coaches have, in fact, done the winter sports before. Any questions, comments? I'm going to assume these have been advertised, the ones that are vacancies. And are we getting any response? Do we know? <coughs> we haven't received any um, response so far. OK. Um, any other questions, comments? Is there a motion? I move right. acceptance of the superintendent's recommendation for athletic fee positions for winter, fall and winter, 96, 97. Second, Second Gail. Any other discussion? All those in favor, 7-0. Right. Moving on to co-curricula. Yep. We have Dick Mullen for auditorium supervisor. Joanne Lee for fifth and sixth grade chorus and seventh and eighth grade chorus. Dick Mullen for sophomore class advisor. Any questions? Did we get clarification on policy and speech? <coughs> when the, the, the two programs were separated a year ago, the way it was categorized is that, that uh, Sarah Franklin was the speech coach, but also part of the speech and debate coordinator. She and, and Dwight have split that responsibility. So it's, and the money was just divided uh, amongst three, uh, and with the third person being the policy debate coach. So again, let me clarify that. The speech coach and speech and debate coordinator is Sarah Franklin. The debate coach or Link, with Lincoln Douglas will be Michael Efron, and then the policy <coughs> Also, slash speech and debate coordinator would be Dwight Ely. Okay, so, so they are sharing that responsibility um, as, as coordinators. So the proposal for that's brought before us for policy, speech, and debate coordinator is not. So he not would be nominated for the Lincoln Douglas only. Right, link, just for just as a as a as a debate coach, correct? Okay. So so I will add to my list Michael Efren as the coach for the Lincoln Douglas portion of right. the debate. And I just have a question about, um, actually, it's not for you, oh. <laughs> believe it or not. Um, Nancy, on the chorus, why is there such a big difference in the hours for chorus for the two different, for the fifth and sixth grade chorus as opposed to seventh and eighth? Because fifth and sixth grade chorus takes place entirely after the school day. Okay. Portion, so, okay. A large portion of seventh and eighth grade chorus takes place during the school day. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions? Is there a motion? Motion? Charlie. I move the, the superintendent's recommendation for co curricular fee position nominations as stated. Is there a second? Gail, any other discussion? All those in favor? 7 0. Uh, next item is a resignation. Cynthia, do you want to? Uh, Susan Mackay, who is a member of our special education staff has submitted her resignation effective January 2nd, 1997. Any questions or discussion? She's a 25-year veteran of the Cape Elizabeth school system. Charlie? Is this a resignation for retirement? Well, she... That's her letter says. Yeah, she's going under disability. Okay. Is there a motion? 
I make the motion that I move that we accept uh, the resignation uh, from Susan Mackay. Second. Keith, second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 7 0. And the next one, go ahead, Cynthia. Request for sabbatical from Susie Terrian. <coughs> we recommend that we move that along to the sabbatical committee for uh, development of a plan. And I would need to know which That's school me. board member. Oh, you're the one. <laughs> it's me. So it was, Priscilla has done it for us, and you're happy to do it again? Oh, delighted. And this, uh, Susie is the only one who has applied this year. Great. And so, I think last year we discussed about that form that um, Buddy Earl's wife had from Falmouth. Yeah. It'd be great if we could maybe use that. And I'll do that. I must too, but. And we can get together at some point. Talk. Great. So we don't have to move on that. We just no, we wait till there. She comes back to us. Yeah. Based on the vote that you took under unfinished business, I would like to do a nomination for the half year point two position in 11th, in, I'm sorry, not 11th, in English at Cape Elizabeth High School. <coughs> I'd like to nominate Joe Conroy. This is a position that he has held in the past and we wish to have him continue in that role. So it would be for a half year. Half year. Okay. So point point two, two for two for quarters. Right. It would for commence about year. November 3rd or 4th, first whatever that first Monday is, and would continue for half year. Could, could we please clarify what the date, the start and end date are? I'll, I'll look it up and put it in the minutes later, if that's sufficient. Okay. Is there a motion? I move that we accept the superintendent's nomination of Joe Conroy for point two, two quarter two quarter appointment to the English department. I second that. Just a uh, clarification. If we were to wait till the next board meeting, it would really be too late because he would not have a chance to plan with them. We'd be into that quarter, so that's why I need to do it tonight. All right, I just think it's important to clarify that. Yeah. Obviously, on his contract, it would be very that's good. Um, there was a second or not? Sorry, yes, there. Charlie, go ahead. Okay. For a second. My move. You she moved. Okay, I, okay. I want a point of clarification. What impact in those two quarters on the student's schedule? Would, the, would their English be at the same period? Or we're, we're, cre we're creating a new class? No. I should have asked that question more. It is my understanding we will create a, a, another class, period eight, which students have study halls. It would not be a, a, a situation where students would have to change courses okay. of other classes to do that. That was looked at prior to. So it'd be a, it will be a different time period, but the kid, it, it did coincide with a, 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 an eighth period where there, was, there were openings to do that. Okay. The reason I asked, so it doesn't cause an uproar in guidance because we have to reorganize. You know. Right, that was, okay. it will not be in conflict in schedules of other courses for these students. Where it is the second and third quarter and the semester ends at the end of the second quarter, is that going to impact? As they have new schedules, you mean? With the semester there courses? There are semester courses, which are a half year, and they're also, and this is bridging two semesters. But it's a full year course. <clears throat> it's a full year course. So no, I understand it's a full but she, year course, I, but it's right. changing the period that they will have that oh, course. Right. Oh, two quarters. I see. Yeah. Okay. What you're saying is if a, if a student was picking up second semester, of course, in that period eight slot, semester. that would impact them. I'm not sure of that, but I don't yeah, think I asked that question, and they assured me it would be. Yeah. Was that the English, English or was that guidance? It wasn't guidance. No, they was not. See, again, it's not the system answering the question, it's a department. Mm -hmm. We had gone through, it was, it had talked with Sharon and guidance about okay. that, had looked at, at they, had take, they had taken individual schedules. But that was for this at. semester. Have they looked at what that eighth period? To my understanding, they had, mm -hmm. with the idea that if they picked up a second semester course, it was in another time frame during the day where they were back to back one semester courses, be it a technology requirement or, or a social studies requirement or another semester course. I will clarify that tomorrow 
make sure that that does not happen. Okay. Then there was a second for the motion. Yes. Um, any other discussion? All those in favor? 7 0. The next item on the agenda is a request to enter executive session for the purpose of discussing negotiations. So moved. Second. There's second. Second. Keith. All those in favor? 7 0. We're done. Do we have technology? Uh, we've gotten it before.